Hey guys, I was driving out to the levee, check on some nukes, and uh, just looking at this bean patch. And these, these beans is up a good little bit. And we should, we should have some blooms if we look. Now, when they get up this big, usually, usually they're starting to bloom. But I guess, oh, okay, yeah. There we go, guys. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that right there. It's a little purple bloom. Just starting, okay, there's another one. It's a little orchid, orchid-shaped bloom. Oh, there's some. I can just feel the moisture coming up out of the ground. It's been raining so much and the sun's out today. It's just so hot, uh, but I can feel the, the humidity just coming up out of the ground. It feels like anyway, guys, that is uh, purple blossoms on soybeans. guys I've been talking about crops this is wheat and of course the bees they they don't do nothing for wheat uh, but wheat is important for us here in the upper delta as beekeepers because wheat signifies late soybean crops so this wheat will be harvested and the only other crop that can really get anything back out of it is soybeans so they will replant this in soybeans and that will extend our season on out. Hey guys. So <clears throat> I've had a lot of questions about uh, row crop and agricultural flows uh, for my area that's predominantly going to be soybean or cotton. Uh, there's a little bit of sunflower production, just not much of it. Uh, so let's talk about cotton. I'm in a cotton field here, uh, Mississippi River, just on the other side of that levee. Um, Shelby Forest on the other side of the river. It's a beautiful area down in here, and this is uh, this is what they this is a sandy loam. A lot of what we got around here is gumbo. It's a heavy clay soil, and can't grow cotton in that. Um, some places you can it kind of mixes in a little better and then they might try it sometimes uh, but predominantly cotton is grown in this sandy sandy soil and you can see the corn stalks they rotate corn in uh, soybean corn and cotton on these uh, you won't see no rice growing here because this this soil will not work for for rice so this cotton in this field is about the height that bees will start working it the cotton plant, it will get so far up. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven leaf nodes here, and then you'll start to see what they call a square. And the square on cotton is where the flower, the bowl, is going to be. Um, the bees will start working. They'll start working that square. And that's where they're going to get nectar from. Uh, they'll work those squares, and then they will work the blossoms. The blossoms are extremely short-lived. I'll show you guys those later when the cotton starts blooming. Uh, it kind of looks like a, a hibiscus. They'll be uh, white, and then they'll be red, and then they're gone. Very short-lived blooms. But as I said, the bees will work the squares. And um, cotton also has an extra floral nectary. So... Um, some plants that also have extra floral nectaries are cherries. Um, I'm sure there's some others, but I can't think of them at the moment. Uh, those are little ports that form on the plant that will ooze nectar and attract the bees. Um, 
beautiful area around here, guys. It's just uh, right here on the other side of me that I'm looking at. I'm looking at a stand of sumac uh, right off this slough. Um, but cotton can be a double-edged sword. Cotton can be an outstanding honey crop. Uh, but if the thresholds get high enough and they have to spray insecticides, then you can have a lot of problems in cotton. Um, you really have to have a good relationship with your farmers. Uh, I stopped at my farmer's shop before coming out here. Um, this is Perini's ground. I, I've worked with them for years now. Uh, it's a very large farming family. Um, many, many cousins and uncles and brothers and sons and grandsons and all that farming here in Crittenden County. Um, they're kind of a, a kind of a farming legacy family. Uh, great people, very bee friendly farmers. Um, so this year I'm on cotton at a couple of my yards with them and um, they just reassured me, let me know, Gus you got nothing to worry about. We'll spray with ground rigs which is very important uh, and we'll spray as late in the evening as we can if we have to. Now with fuel costs what they are and chemical costs are outrageous as well they're not going to be spraying this cotton unless they got to and they may not even have to spray it um, but I can rest assured having a good relationship with my farmers that I know if they do have to spray they're going to let me know they're going to use a ground rig a spray rig versus aerial spraying and they're going to spray late in the evening um, and that's going to keep my bees safe so there are there's some tricky things with cotton you know you can really get get worn out on it but uh, if everything goes right you know i would expect a 100 pound crop per colony off of this cotton um, the farmer's going to expect probably or or can expect around a 15 percent increase in, in their yield off of the bee pollination uh, cotton does not require insect pollination but uh, it does benefit from it so there's a few things on cotton. Uh, got soybeans to the other side of me. Then I got, of course, the levee y'all can see in the background. All past that will be uh, lots of natural forage. Uh, I got the benefit of a, a pretty good persimmon flow here uh, late spring. And we're waiting on the red vine to bloom. Right now we're loaded down with sumac and, and pepper vine. Uh, and my bees... Let's show you guys. So you see the levee there. And my bees is uh, on the other side of these these trees tucked away between the levee uh, and the tree line. So <clears throat> lots of windbreak, um, lots of protection, lots of natural forage. And it's just a great spot. So if you guys got any questions on cotton, let me know. Okay guys, here's some sumac. If you look close, you can see bees, honeybees, native bees, and all number of flying things working this stuff. If you take a look close. This here, this here's sumac. Makes a fantastic honey. Now guys, this is elderberry. You can see there's some bugs on here, but not many. Bees ain't working that. Beautiful, very fragrant. Really nice, but bees don't really work it. 